Okay, so someone asked me on my tutorial on how to respawn an object, and they wanted to instead use it so there was a trash can, so if you chucked your object into that trash can, it would respawn the object. And so here's how you go about doing so. First, what we need is we need an object to respawn. So I'm going to right click 3D object cylinder. Now, the cylinder is in a dumb location, so I'm going to fly around and go Control Shift F to place where I am. I'm then going to reset its rotation to be something reasonable. And then I'm just going to scale it down to, I don't know, 0.6 will probably be about right. Okay, so it's a bit of a large trash can. It doesn't really matter though. Also, it defaults to a capsule collider. I'd prefer a mesh collider for this. So I'm just going to change it to a mesh collider, make it convex, but I'm not going to select is trigger. No, I am going to select is trigger. Let's go for that instead. Okay, so the thing with the collider is that one of your objects needs to be a trigger and one of them needs to be collider. Otherwise, if you have two triggers, they don't technically do a physics interaction and therefore they don't collide. And if they're both colliders, well, they can't go inside of each other and therefore you don't get a reaction. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that one of them is a collider. Now, my object is an object that falls, and so I've set it to be a box collider. It doesn't collide with the player, however, because it's put on the pickup layer, and the pickup layer doesn't collide with a player. And it will default to the pickup layer whenever you have a pickup script on your object. So this object has got it as a box collider, and so I therefore want my trash can to be a trigger. Awesome, so now that I've got that going, we want to create a script to make this logic work. So I'm going to create an Unum behavior, I'm then going to come down to my project window and go right click create via chat udon udon graph program asset and I'm going to call this trash script. You can call it whatever you want. So we can just drag and drop this trash script onto our udon behavior and now we need to write what the script is. So I'm just going to open up udon graph and now that we're in the graph it's time to create our logic. So we want it whenever this object falls into the trash can for it to respawn that object. Therefore, we need to create an event. So I want to right click create node event on trigger enter. And this event will play whenever a collider enters a trigger. This is why we had to have one object as a collider and one as a trigger. Then what we want to do is grab that object's object sync and tell the object sync to respawn. So what we want to do is we want to come out from this collider and we want to go collider get game object. And we can drag that into there. Then we want to go game object get component. We want to change it from string to type. Then we want to go VRC type object sync and then just drag that into the type. Now there's technically a collider get component, but I've had issues with that in the past. Anyways, so now that we have the object, we can go and put that into a VRC object sync respawn node. And so now it will respawn the object. And so now whenever a trigger enters, it will grab its VRC object sync and respawn the object. However, depending on how your scene is set up, there might be a potential for this on trigger enter to play but the object doesn't actually have an object sync on it. And in that case, the script will crash and will no longer work. So we want to add a check to make sure that the object does truly have an object sync on it. So I'm just going to right click create node and just type is valid. And then we just want to set it up so that only if the object is true and it is a valid object, we want it to then tell it to respawn that object. So I'm just going to drag and drop the true into the object sync respawn and I'll get component into the object. Awesome, so now this should work. So I just want to go hit compile, come back into our scene, and it's time to test this out. And now that we're in the world, we can grab our object, and it should be that when we chuck the object into the trash can, it respawns the object. Awesome! So now, what if we wanted to make it so the trash can only works for some objects? Because you could easily have a scenario where you have a bunch of objects you want to respawn, but then you don't want your pin markers to respawn if they go in the trash can. So how can we make sure that our object is the object we want to respawn? Well, one way that I'm going to do in this particular instance is that we can use the name of the object as a way of telling if it's meant to be respawned. So if I'm just going to change my bush in a pot name to be item bush in a pot. So then I'm going to check to make sure that the name of the object that I want to respawn has the name item in it. So this means we're going to have very different named objects, but they all share a core part together. And so this way we're able to use a small section of its name to test whether or not it's meant to respawn. There are other methods of doing this, but this is by far the easiest way of doing it instead of messing with tags or whatnot. So coming back into the graph, we need to add a bit of logic. The first thing we want is a stringed variable to say what we're looking for. So I'm going to come into my variables tab and I'm going to create a string. I'm going to call this respawn string and I'm going to hit this little drop down menu and make it public so we're able to see it inside the inspector. Then we need to confirm that the game object's name contains the string. So I'm going to create a game object get name node. And we can use this node to get the name of the game object that just got triggered by this event. 
So I want to compare this string to our respawn string. So I'm going to use a string contains node to check if this name contains the string. So I'm going to plug our name into the instance slot and our string into the value slot. So this node will now check to see whether or not this name contains this value or the string that we posted in. So now we have a bool value, so we can easily put that into a branch node. And then we only want this bit of code to run when this branch node is true. So I'm going to grab our arrow from our on trigger enter and plug the true of the branch node into the is valid slot. So now for a bit of rearranging, we can see that our code now on trigger enter will check to see whether or not this is an object we want to respawn. And if it is an object we want to respawn, we will check to see whether or not that particular object has an object sync on it. And if it does have an object sync, we will then tell it to respawn that object. If its name doesn't contain the string or if it hasn't got an object sync, it won't play the script and therefore it won't crash the script as well so we can respawn other objects. Which is just some good redundancy to make sure we can always respawn objects. Awesome, so now hit compile and come back into our scene. I'm going to click on our bush and just grab this item name to make sure that we are being correct because it is case sensitive. I'm going to select our cylinder and I'm just going to change its respawn strings value to be item. And so now when I play test this, we can see that now that I'm in the world, when I chuck my object onto it, it should respawn the object. But if I was to select my object again, I can delete the item in its name. And so now when I chuck it into the trash can, we can see that it doesn't respawn. Awesome. So hopefully you found this helpful. Feel free to leave a like if you liked it, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and feel free to check out some of my other tutorials that I have on the channel. But until next time, 